So I'm putting on the, the number one skin. So goes right there. As you can see, the other skins are already on, dimpled. Everything is ready to start riveting. So this one, I'll finish preparing and put it in place. And then all I'll have left is the really narrow 32 thousandths that goes around the root. I'm prepping this wing skin to go on for the final time. So my first step before I dimple or deburr is to take an edge roller and roll the seam over so that when it is riveted down, it won't curl up and it'll lay nice and flat. And this tool I'm using, I'm not thrilled with it, but it works. Um, I don't remember which supply house I got it from, but uh, don't go for this one because you saw it in the video. Well then, uh, the next step is always to deburr a few hundred holes. Now the holes are deburred, I'll go through this back side and look for scratches and damage that need to be removed. There's a pretty good scratch right there. And so then I usually just take some 220 to start with and work it out. And then I finish it off with uh, one of these purple metal pads, which who knows what the grid is, but it's pretty darn fine. That's gone. So I'll do that in a few places around here. And then I will take this with my orbital sander and buff the whole thing. Because before I put it on, I'm going to spray paint primer down the rivet lines for the contact areas on the ribs and uh, it's a little too shiny to properly bond. So there we go, I'm happy with that. And this side is ready to be primed, which I'll just prime down the rivet lines, not the whole thing. But before I do that, I'm going to turn it over, take the plastic off, deburr all the holes on the other side, and dimple it. Alright, I turned the sheet over, and before I start working on it, I'm going to put this tube in under there. That something came in. Just a cardboard tube, and that's so that if I lean on this or push down, I don't crinkle this, because I did find out the hard way you can. I'm going to start peeling this plastic off. Which is a pain in the butt. But I'm just going to peel it back about an inch or so and get a broom handle to roll it off with. I'm going to take this broom and I'm going to lay it on here. Then I'm going to take and peel up some of this plastic and get it started around it. And I'm going to give it a little tape because I don't want to peel off enough to get a full wrap. More work than I'm willing to put into it. So I'll do that all the way across. twist the broom. Once I get one wrap, 
it won't rip or tear anymore. Sometimes a little bit of pain in the butt at the beginning here to get the tape to hold. So now it's home free. Just roll all the film off. So now just a little utility knife action. And all this is off of here. Well, with that done, another round of deburring. So it's time to dimple that sheet. So in order to do that, I put together a C-frame because I didn't have one. And then I thought, well, I got a box of pneumatic parts, so I might as well make it pneumatic. So anyhow, I did end up buying this air cylinder off of eBay and this pedal. So it's, I don't know how much pneumatics I had work. But basically, when you step on the pedal, it'll push down. Now, I did use a two-inch air cylinder originally which puts out about 400 pounds at 125 PSI of force. Um, it actually wasn't enough with the 632 screw and 32 thousandths aluminum to really produce a nice dimple. So then I changed it over to this four inch air cylinder. Uses the regular dies off a hand squeezer. And I set it up with the male die up. And the reason I do that is it's easier for me to lift the sheet up and find the hole that way than it is to try to find the hole from underneath. So, put a little tape on here because I found that the holes in here loosened up a little bit over time. And I'm just a little paranoid that die will fall out, but it hasn't. Dies in, put this down on the ground, and I'm ready to go. Well, these first holes I'm dimpling here are the 632 screws for the fuel tank. So now I'm doing the number three rivet holes. So now I'm doing the number fours along the edge. Well, that's it for that. <clears throat> now I'm ready to turn it over and primer it. Now with the sheet turned over, I'm gonna prime it down the river lines. I'm gonna primer. Um, just to give a little more protection on where the two sheets contact each other, which is where you would have your biggest corrosion problem. <laughs>